Good reminder, Greg. Good reminder. Hello, Lily Bear. Happy birthday, Lily Bear. We get Andy early today. He has a uh, he has to dip out uh, about 50 minutes in, so he's going to join us early so we can maximize that time. Some of the news will come after, like the world news slash uh, politics, etc. Hello, Fred. Hello, Middle Aware. No, hello, Charlie Doodle. Hello, B O Y U. Tom Hotsey. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. slow it down. See, today's Epic Times edition is April 17th. 23rd that hits me. Ooh, I've not noticed any of that at all. And I got into it this morning, read many articles from them this morning. I actually have, I think, two of them, two of them or three of them in here. Whoa, it is ripping. Hello, Pink Flamingo. Hello, Honeybee. Hello, Todd. Hoops, half pint. Tony, good morning. Hello, whip and booger booker. You know, hadn't been the hadn't been the same. Not getting to see your fun comments over on the Rumble side. Sherry, can I show you a little Brazil? I'll start getting out more tomorrow. Um, part of it was getting settled in, recovering, resting, but I will make it a point to uh, let you guys see more of it. Somewhere in the USA, girl. Thank you for that, Mother Eagle, American Mom. Don't have a coffee mug yet, but I did have my coffee this morning. That is on my list today in between a number of other things. Hello, turd pops. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the island of misfit toys. You anti-intellectuals. That's what Katie Kirk has uh, dubbed anybody that would vote for Donald Trump. You're anti-intellectual. You're jealous of everything they have, of their superior intellect. And education. <laughs> you want to talk about a world class way to polarize against you. <clears throat> and I find it very surprising because I know, oh, also, you guys are poor. Uh, while many are, I get that. Um, you seem to be incapable of earning money, according to uh, Miss Couric. You're just the underbelly of society. Worked out really well when uh, Hillary called us all deplorables, right? Mouth breathing Walmart shoppers. Textbook example of how you polarize your opposition. Hello, Rob J. <laughs> Might be fun. Can we do some, I don't know, IQ tests with, uh, with Katie and C? If that Ivy League education actually helped. It's the same folks telling us we're dumb. But think men can have babies. Right? You can change your genetics, your chromosomes, just by thinking it. I did not know it's the day of pigs, the Bay of Pigs uh, anniversary today. I should know that, but I, but I didn't. Let me make certain I uh, highlight and say thank you. Again, somewhere in the USA, girl, thank you. Miss Rebecca Hill, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, you can't make up the craziness. What did Julie Green say? I'm trying to catch it. It's moving too fast. It was on fire this morning. Such inspiring news for the rough time, tough times ahead with no fear. All we need is God's armor. That's what we got. That's what we have. That's enough. Wu <laughs> Tam trying to get pregnant my whole adult life. No luck yet. <laughs> when the IRS is done with you, you might be, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Rye Guy, good to see you, Marlo. Good to see you. Uh, yes, it does, Gary. Hello, happy hound. Reading a few of these. Hello, Randy. Uh, yeah, thank you, Randy. Man, I'm going to have to try to keep up with you guys. You are ripping this morning. Thank you, Randy B. Embalmer. Go get your... Randy, thank you. I will get it today. I just uh, looked some yesterday. Only had so much free time with uh, prep, work, etc. 
Um, today will be very crunched as well, but I will get time to find that coffee mug somewhere. What's up, Lumbago? Oh, I need to uh, stay focused. Stay focused, right? Turns out the key to losing weight and keeping it off. It's not in carbs or fat or even probiotic rich foods. Now, the end game of having a healthy weight as well as more energy and a long, healthy life comes down to a specific switch you can flip in your body to flush out unnecessary calories. Dr. Stephen Gundry is calling this caloric bypass. <clears throat> and by activating this specific process in your body, he has seen thousands, thousands of people dramatically improve their health, even at age 50 and beyond. Not only that, it's actually associated with improved digestion, strong feeling joints and muscles, smoother skin, healthier lives, meaning it could be the key to a health, happy life. Dr. Stephen Gundry has lost 70 pounds himself using his research and has kept that weight off for over 20 years and counting. His digestive issues are gone. His health is fantastic. He feels younger, healthier today than he did in his 40s. His video has been watched by over 20 million people to date. You can watch it. Learn more about it at thehealthyfat.com forward slash Mark Z. Thehealthyfat.com forward slash Mark Z. He'll show you exactly how free of charge. Highly suggest you share that video, though. Reading a few of these. Reading a few this morning before we dive in. Let's see. Uh, Charlie and I, and I think we have some people that are going to join at the event. Uh, I think we've got some that are joining remotely. I don't know if we have any local or Brazilian speakers. I certainly hope so. I need to qualify and find out. Yes, the rumors are I am going to be on the Insiders Club today. I'm a little confused whether it's one to two my time or two to three my time, but I'm going to be there on Charlie's Insiders Club this morning or this afternoon, I should say. Now, try to keep up. Somebody else did a super chat. Miss Andrea trying to figure out whether to register historic bonds. OK, what's MCT? Andrea, if you could email me that and I'll give you my thoughts. There are so many, so many. Uh, yeah, so many scams out there trying to get people to buy certain wallets so that they can access QFS. You name it. Guys, don't fall for them. You don't need to. And it just went flying. PG is playing. Everybody is he playing? Let's see. That PG. She said, who's? <laughs> I'm a little slow. I'm going to leave some of those right there. I don't want to create more animosity in the community. Yeah, men would never be able to handle the labor pains. Jay, I'm with you. <laughs> Wait, that must have been Amy using it, Jay. But she's not wrong. Why men don't have babies because they can't handle No, I'm with you. I had kidney stones, and that's enough for me. <laughs> Please wish my friend uh, Walter's happy 99th birthday today. That is amazing. We've got a uh, 90th coming up on Sunday for one of our members as well. Uh, yes, Mika, guys, um, matter of fact, let me see if I can pull this up or not. Um, I am looking. Not certain I can do this. I mean, nope, that one's not it. Bear with me, guys. Ah, there it is. And I want to see if there is a way I can show it. Miss Mika is recovering. There is hope ahead, but the medicine is expensive. I do not have that link to share. So hopefully the mods do for any that feel so inclined, they could certainly use it. I am going to try here to uh, show you one of the latest pictures. I'm um, going to have to kind of bear with me on this one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not certain how I'm going to do it on this one, guys. You're just going to have to. Uh... Yeah, you're just going to have to run with it. With the uh, computer system I've got going now to take me too long to figure it out. So. But she is responding. She is awake. Um, there is great hope and progress being made. 
uh, but we still have to be able to make certain she stays on it on her medicine until she gets out. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Mods, yesterday Mark asked a question. Several posted, but he did not see a lady in YouTube. Reminded him and he thanked her. Well, a mod chastised her response saying that people should. All right, one. Okay, Chris, don't buck the mods. We all make mistakes. We're all human. Hello, Richard Nasser. This weekend, I don't know, Richard. Thank you for that super chat. We do not know the timing. I think it's still a little premature. I think that's probably a weekend ahead of what is most likely. Jay Branch, it's uh, just the Insiders Club. It's what Charlie calls his group. Uh, don't know on the Tesla 1400, but I can tell you as much as the press uh, mainstream media is at war over free speech with Elon Musk and his support of free speech. The chance that they laid off 1400 and it's not the top story on every outlet in the world makes me say BS to that one. Might get surprised, but I highly, highly, highly doubt it. Uh, the video with Mark Z, Jan, and Zestri. I haven't seen it yet. Somebody have to show it to me. I can tell you, Miss Jan is just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful lady. Jordan C. Zester should join you for tonight's live. He will be on Whiskey and Wisdom tonight. But he will probably be sitting in his room. Uh, Rumble is not allowed. Susan, Susan Zip. Again, uh, Susan, you probably just missed this because you didn't know to come over here. But Rumble is not allowed right now inside of the country of Brazil. I am in Brazil. So, no, I cannot use Rumble. I run the risk of sitting in a pokey for an extended period of time. So I am uh, because of the crackdown on anything that might be considered controversial, journalism, etc. cetera. Um, so I, it's just not worth the risk. I will not be using Rumble until I return stateside. Insiders is at 1 p.m. Eastern, so two for me. Thanks, Rob, for doing the uh, time change for me. Boozing in Brazil, that might be a fun one. I am trying to catch up. Bonnie F., thank you, guys. Brandy says, hey, is it true people are starting to get notifications? How do I put that one? Um, it's, I'm not trying to keep anything from you, but it is very confusing with the communication right now. Let's do that right now because we're going to have Andy at any minute. So let's just uh, dive in a little bit real quickly. Most of this is going to be world news because I have started running into most of my sources with gag orders. Some of them actual NDAs, some of them just being squeezed on or leaned on by their, we'll call them leadership in this process, especially amongst groups, uh, as they're being leaned on not to share anything. Uh, appears that we are getting close to the finish line. Uh, my Iraqi sources certainly think so. We don't know the timing, guys. It's very positive that I have so many contacts getting leaned on for quiet to me, it's just a fantastic sign. I do have another bond update coming today. Hopefully, we will get something out of them. I am still, for my bond person yesterday, going straight to voicemail, which means their equipment is turned off. Um, I take that as an excellent sign. Absolutely excellent sign. I'm going to turn that one off. we got a lot to talk about, but it is really, really covering everything I can see when I'm using the laptop. Let me see if I can find this one. Mika opened her eyes. Finally, the medicine the doctor said is impaired. Did she not miss a treatment? Please help if you can. The medicine is expensive for us. You are saving her life. No, it's true, guys. We have been a lifesaver for Miss Mika. And, of course, you know how that works for parents. When you save a child's life, you save theirs. Uh, Jason, 
Yeah, it's probably easier not to have the conversations with them and let them be pleasantly surprised. No, it does make it tough. And Jason, honestly, that is one of the main reasons why they fill our community with so much misinformation, why we need to be able to really think through what's logical um, is because they do that and they do it on purpose uh, in hopes that we just cave and go right back into their belief structure. All right, I do in the background have an Andy, and this is going to be interesting because I do have a couple of my news stories to share are well-timed having Andy here. Hello, my friend. Where are Good you? I am in Brazil. Oh, my goodness. You are a traveling man. Uh, well, you know, they want to hear. I, they would have been really happy to have an Andy Sheckman as well. I would have loved yeah. to have been there. <laughs> Look, there's still time. Can you be here by Saturday? <laughs> Oh, that's a little tight, brother. That's a little tight, but uh, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you made it there safe, and it's good to be here. So what's going on, brother? Uh, let's see. What do we have going on in today's news? IMF steps up this warning to the U.S. over spending and ballooning debt, says, hey, you're putting the entire, your fiscal, U.S. fiscal stance is risking the entire global financial instability. We could crash the whole system because of our spending. And I'm like, really? Duh. Well, yeah, I mean, when your national debt's rising by a trillion dollars every hundred days and or approximately, get this, $100,000 a second, uh, you wonder why. You reach a point of absurdity. And, you know, um, in 2017, the debt was was $20 trillion and, and, you know, we're, we're going to be $40 trillion by 2025. <coughs> Excuse me. It, it's a situation that it just becomes becomes unattainable and what it, a bigger picture in all of this to me that is is being i don't think really discussed enough by the mainstream is what's going on with our our you know look i think you could make a statement in nowadays next to um, hydrogen stupidity might be the most common element in, in the universe these days. And I, when you I, talk I believe it is. I think it's beat hydrogen. Yeah, it may, it may have. And, you know, I've talked a lot about, about weaponizing of the dollar. And we saw that when Janet Yellen was stupid enough to go into Brazil and say, you know, Russian assets need to be not just, um, sanctioned but confiscated to fund the Ukrainian war. I mean, this is in Brazil. This is a charter member of BRICS. I mean, is this, it's too stupid to be stupid, right? It has to be planned. She has to, can't be that dumb. But now she's doing it again with China. And I would say this is from the too stupid to be stupid category. And and that the article that was written or inter, she was interviewed in CNBC, that the U.S. is ready to sanction Chinese banks if they aid the Russian war machine. So on top of all of the debt and the, in, and the instability in the bond market and, and, and a exponentially increasing debt, I mean, people a trillion seconds ago was 31,688 years ago. So when we talk about a $150 trillion debt, 34 on balance and 77 trillion in, Medi uh, in uh, Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and government mili military pensions all owed to the American public. The majority of this debt is owed to us. A lot easier to default on us and start over than the rest of the world. But to incentivize that moment where the world no longer or just simply rejects our treasuries, what you're seeing happen right now, and, and they've chosen, I believe, gold and oil as a substitute to U.S. treasuries, um, as, as money, as wealth. It's being remonetized. They are being remonetized across the globe as assets that that are not simultaneously the liability of others and more specifically can't be confiscated or sanctioned by a hypocritical West. I've used the example of Iraq with your listeners a million times. Now we've got Russia. And now listen to what this absurdity, what she says about China. The United States is prepared to sanction Chinese banks and companies as well as Beijing's leadership if they aid the Russian military in its invasion of the Ukraine, U U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Monday. So let me just get this straight. I mean, it's so absurd, it's almost embarrassing and insulting that we can give money to the Ukraine that really isn't our ally the way that China and Russia are charter members of the BRICS, right? But they can't do it, but we can. You know, forget about what we've done in Iraq and the embarrassment in Afghanistan and all the shit that we've done. <laughs> 
but we get to make the rules and maybe the most ups and she says we stand ready to act if we see significant violations by financial institutions anything that involves aiding russia russia's military in their brutal war against ukraine is unacceptable to us but we have the ability to sanction it but from i mean this is listen to this i mean it's just so elitist and stupid china is entitled to have a relationship with russia she said noting that much of the trade between the two countries is seen by the U.S. as non-problematic. But the provision of military aid from Beijing to Moscow could trigger sanctions. I mean, do you see the absurdity in this? Do you wonder why the world is dumping our treasuries and buying gold in exchange or in substitute of treasuries? The absurdity, the notion of it is embarrassing and, and, and so hypocritical, it's gross. So I want people to understand that when you see the IMF come out and say, yeah, your debt problem is too big. Sure it is. It, it, I agree. It's ridiculously stupid, uh, as is the, you know, $100 billion every three months in, in interest expense added on to all of this. It's not just that. It's not just that our country has lost its bearing in every single way, our culture being whitewashed, stuff I talk about all the time. But it is this stupidity this hypocrisy, this, this ability to say, I am holier than thou. I can do this shit, but you can't, right? Because I'm the adult in the room, but you're not. And if you try, well, we're going to sanction you. And now she's threatening to sanction Iran again. So, you know, and maybe rightfully so, maybe not. Who's to say? The point of it is it shouldn't be up to only us to decide as the world reserve currency. And this is going to have very, very, very big reverberations and ramifications as, as the rallying cry goes louder and louder and louder and louder to join um, a group of where there's safety in numbers and break free from this, this uh, hegemony. I, I just think it's crazy. No, it's absolutely insanity and in that they can't see it. I mean, you, know, you, you look at history. History has shown us exactly how this plays out. Um, and, and I don't know if they are just that ignorant, that naive, or just that authoritarian that they don't care. It's uh, it's stunning to me as I, as I watch it play out. I've got some uh, more fun ones to really get you in a salty mood, just get you ripping and yeah, rolling. Yeah, let's do it. Right? <laughs> uh, you're going to enjoy this one. The Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal. They want us to know where are, where are growth, inflation, interest rates headed. We asked the economists, and they say they asked the economists. They asked. They did a survey of academic economists who are now saying, "Oh man, soft landing is getting more and more probable." Heck, only twenty nine percent think that there is any chance of a recession. Whereas 60 some of them felt like a recession was highly probable not long ago. Now only 29% think there is a recession problem. These are the same academic uh, intellectuals that believe for some reason that, um, well, let, let, let's pick one. Uh, they believe the job market's great. Uh, they don't see a problem with all the new jobs going to uh, illegal immigrants. They don't see any problem with um, all the jobs uh, being created. We're spending $2 to get one more in GDP. Government spending $2 to get one more dollar in GDP. They see no problems with all this. Yeah. And, and the numbers that they give us out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you got to take the L out of it. And it's just to be the BS because, you know, when you talk about the employment numbers in 2023, they were supposedly so amazing and everyone was talking about it. But yet quietly in January, they revised the numbers down by 440,000 jobs or 40% of all the job creation last year was revised as being wrong. And, and you look at the jobs that are being created, they're part-time jobs, people who work in second and third jobs, the big paying jobs, you're seeing layoff after layoff after layoff. You know, my, I, I just hired my son to work for my company. He spent the last few years working at one of the big three accounting firms, got a CPA. They laid off 70 people in his division. What the hell do you need, young kid? You know, earning eighty, ninety thousand a year, doing, um, you know, being a forensic auditor, or doing CPA work when you can plug it into AI. The point of it is, is that the the labor market in terms of the good paying jobs are are becoming further and further and further uh, apart from you know the jobs that are being created, and these are jobs that are part time that don't have the benefits. 
Uh, and then you see, you know, things like what's going on in, in California as well, where they want to bump the, the minimum wage up to 20 bucks. And all of these <laughs> restaurants that are these fast food restaurants are forced to fire everyone and go and go to, you know, more of a of a automated platform. And speaking of fast food and inflation, price inflation at, at, at every fast food restaurant in the United States has far exceeded CPI inflation since 2014. <laughs> Prices at McDonald's have doubled since 2014, while official inflation data shows just 31%. So since 2014, the we're being told that prices are up 31%. Like, that's not bad enough. McDonald's prices have doubled. Prices at Popeye's, Taco Bell, and Chipotle have risen by 86, 81, and 75% respectively. Now feeding a family for one meal at a fast food restaurant costs more than 50 bucks. And so, you know... I think if you look at the economic data, it says it's strong. If you ask the people, they say the economy sucks. Why is there such a disconnect? It's because the Bureau of Labor Statistics has a vested interest in lying to us. The post office just raised their stamps by 10%. But why is it that the CPI is only saying 3%? Where's What's the problem here? And as far as inflation going away, it, it's just beginning. You know, it's just beginning. And, and I and I think in terms of interest rates, the interest rate issue is that the reason interest rates, in my mind, it's not just the fact that there's inflation. It's not just the fact that the people know, the market knows that the Fed is trapped. They can't raise rates or they blow up the system. And if, if they choose the other path, that's inflation. So it's one or the other. It's either yeah. inflate or default or raise rates, which causes a default. So that's why I've always said, find a villain. And that's why Janet Yellen is saying this stupid shit to incentivize everyone to dump our treasuries, which they are doing and replacing it with gold, which has no counterparty risk, which has no sanction risk, which has no default risk, which has outperformed the bond market by many multiples over the last, in this century for the last 25 years, has a longer track record of being considered money. And so as the rest of the world is no longer interested in owning our treasuries because of this risk, where if you do not align ideologically, they take it from you. Um, and, and so instead of doing that, they're shedding treasuries and buying gold, which will push rates up. So who who's holding all of our treasuries? I mean, I guess if we believe Ireland and, and, um, uh, and what's it called? The Cayman Islands are the biggest holders of our treasuries. Okay, fine. You know, I got some beachfront uh, uh, property to uh, oceanfront property to sell you in Minnesota, if that's the case. And it's just a situation where there is no soft landing. There is no getting rid of inflation. It's just beginning. And um, I, I think that these types of media outlets aren't just doing a poor job of telling people what's happening. They're doing no, no job. And all of these people who listen to this, garbage are going to end up getting run over by what's coming hey well it's clear i mean the, the the it's kind of a two thing here the fed can either save the currency or they can save the bond saving the bond saves the government saving the currency saves the people they can do one they can't do both that's right if you think they're picking you you are naive and clearly not paying attention because they have already shown you they are choosing to save the government and the bond market and not the people and the currency Right. And if you look, yes, and you're right. And if you look at the the break in correlation between the 10 year treasury and the price of gold, I mean, you go back years and they move perfectly symmetrically together until 2022 or so beginning 2023. They start to diverge like this, where, you know, the the 10 year treasury is falling as rates are rising. That means people are selling the 10 year treasury don't want any duration risk with this country for so they sell the treasury and then they're buying gold and they're diverging and and they don't care about these correlations the central banks don't care about the inverse correlation they they want the gold and this is something that i think explains why you're seeing rates rise on the 10 year and, and why you're seeing gold rise together which is something that normally when you talk about rising yields, it should have an inverse impact on gold, which is a non-interest bearing asset. Uh, but it's not because it, I think it, it, it says a lot about the way the world looks at our debt and the future of this country and, and the, you know, the, the prospects of holding on to anything of duration in this country. Yeah. For me, listening to the IMF, tell the U.S. that we are jeopardizing the entire fiscal system. Sure we are, but the IMF 
is already turning on the U.S. for the fall guy. You need somebody to blame. Uh, for inflation, it's just like you know watching the Biden administration every other day try to come up with somebody else to blame. They usually go back to just blaming Putin like they do for everything or else. Trump. Or Trump. Yeah. Uh, instead of their own fiscal policies, et cetera. Uh, but now even the IMF is uh, going, you know, I don't think they're going to keep buying this uh, Putin's to blame for everything or Trump's to blame for everything. So we're just going to go ahead and blame the U.S. for everything. I mean, e even the rest of the world is getting ready to throw us on the altar for a sacrifice. Well, I think we're hated. And, and that's one of the things that is so depressing, you know were hated for for exactly what Janet Yellen is doing. I mean, not just that, but going around and sanctioning the world and doing so with in, in you know, going around in a coercive manner when people look at at what we are doing both internally and externally as being, you know, um a country that that that's hypocritical and has lost its bearings and they're the ones making the rules. I think it it is it it's nuts and and art you know if that's a picture of you appreciate your service to this country god bless um yeah i don't know if it's the chicken or the egg you know i don't know if, if it's if metals rising are are a a symptom or or or, or the the cause of the collapse um you know mm -hmm. i think metals will go higher than anyone thinks possible in in fiat terms and that that's the important thing to understand because um, I don't know that if in terms of fiat currency, if there's a real top, um, because I don't think any of you want to be the last person holding fiat dollars, you know, when you know better and you can't exchange it for something like gold or silver or anything that you consider to be substantial. And I think the central banks look at it the exact same way. When you talk about fiat currency, it could go higher than anyone thinks possible in the in the light of a dollar that is losing global demand. Um, I think if you zoom out far enough um, and look at what Voltaire said, all you know, all currencies uh, move to their revert to the value of zero. Um, uh, Dr. Franz Pick always said, you know. Um, paper currencies are, are, you know, inherently meant to die and they all do. So I don't know if you could make that distinction, but just simply to say that it's more along the lines of being a barometer of the health of the country. So the higher the price of metals go, the sicker the country b becomes underneath it. And um, I don't know that number, but I think we'll all have a good idea within our guts where, where, where that is and, and how significant price of gold and silver are in reflection of a falling dollar. Um, I, I did have a, another one uh, that I think you will uh, enjoy. <laughs> UBS, now this is uh, making Bloomberg, uh, 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 the Bank of Switzerland, uh, positive on gold, looking for it to rise to 2,500. Can I tell you, Andy, how much hell I caught when I made the prediction just a couple of weeks ago that in the month of uh, April, we would most likely see $2,400 gold and $30 silver? Um, now you've got some of the biggest out there saying, hey, I under, I undershot at that uh, guess. Well, yeah. And, you know, in fact, I've read recently where UBS concludes, and I'll read it verbatim, should history repeat, it's not too late to participate in this gold rally as investors with a two to three year time horizon could expect to see gold potentially double from here to 4,000. Bank of America says 3,000 gold by 2025 and $30 an ounce silver within the next few months. And Goldman is out with an uh, upgrade to 2,700 uh, for gold this year. So, you know, you got the, I don't know what it means when you see the cartel commercial bank selling the, saying this. Um, you know, I think it's interesting when you look at the things that I say about gold and calling it money. I want to read something to you from the International Monetary Fund. You mentioned the IMF. As per International Monetary Fund policy, the only universally accepted financial asset that is not someone else's liability is gold. Financial assets are economic assets that are financial instruments. Financial assets include financial claims and, by convention, monetary gold held in the form of gold bullion. A, fin a financial claim is a financial instrument that has a counterparty liability. Gold bullion is not a claim and does not have a corresponding liability. It is treated as a financial asset. However, 
because of its special role as a means of a of financial exchange and international payments by monetary authorities and as a reserve asset held by monetary authorities. I mean, they're, they're saying it's the only asset that has no counterparty liability. That is coming from the IMF. And when you see the central banks buying it at a level the world has never seen before, that's all you need to know. These people know the playbook and they know where things are going and they're making these statements. They're dropping crumbs at our feet so they can come back and say, see, we told you this. And no, you don't have to be an economist or even particularly astute. Just open your eyes and look at what is being said. The problem is you got to listen to a guy like me or you to get this information because this is not easily found. I spend hours every day digging everywhere around the globe to find information that should be front and center to the American public as this empire slowly fades into obscurity because we're not being told what's really important and what's happening. Yeah, too many people weren't paying attention to Ludwig, were they? Um, no. Not enough. Uh, how, about a, how about a couple of silver, a very couple, a couple of very big silver, uh, <clears throat> potentially silver stories that um, I think are worth mentioning? Uh, one first and then the big one after. The first one is that, um, you know, I talked a lot about about India who imported 400 million ounces of silver in the last two years. That's about the same amount of silver that was drained out of Comex. And they bought more than anyone. In fact, right now there's about 40, uh, there's about uh, 40 million ounces of silver on Comex that is backing the bar of the contracts. Well, you know, all of the contracts that are out there, call it 40 million ounces. Uh, that's one tenth the amount of silver that India has imported in the last two years. And Last year was the biggest year ever. So listen to this. India's uh, imports um, of silver surged by 260% in February to a record high. India imported 2,295 metric tons of silver in February, up from 637 tons in January. The country's silver imports surged to 2,932 tons in the first two months of 2024, compared to 3,625 tons for all of 23, which was a record. Um, and so they are massively doubling down on their accumulation of silver. And there's rumor out there that the Chinese, and I have people who are um, kind of entrenched in China, and, and they're saying that there are rumors out there that the Chinese are now telling their people to buy silver more so than by gold. I think they realize it is the Achilles heel, that it's a much smaller market. And they, they themselves, I mean, look, the Shanghai Exchange has a $3 premium on silver right now to the Western price, which is incentivizing arbitrage. Now they're telling their people to buy it. But this might be the biggest silver story that I've seen in a while here. And that is that, you know, the majority of the silver that is mined in the world comes from Peru and Mexico. They're the two biggies. And uh, the, the current president of Mexico, who looks to be on his way out here, and he's losing in the polls to a woman, yeah. um, and sh which would be the first female president in Mexico. Mexico. Well, right. And the guy that's there right now has um, wants to actually change the Constitution. He, he has a bill or, or an act in place to change the Constitution to completely get rid of an all-out ban on open pit mining. And, and to change the Constitution, saying you can never do it again. And they're the number one or two largest producer of it in the world. The presumed successor, this woman who was ahead in the polls, is actually all for that as well. So, I mean, you're talking about the potential of no more silver mining in the form of open pit mining in the largest or second largest producer of silver in the world. I mean, you talk about cutting off the supply in, in an in an environment where we've seen a structural deficit between supply and demand for the past two years and over 200 million ounces a year. And now you do this, uh, and then you see the massive acquisition by, by India. Um, you know, these things, you have to ask yourself. I mean, to me, the easiest one is why would four commercial banks or so hold the largest concentrated position in any commodity ever traded in silver in this environment? I mean, you're talking as stupid as a mud wall. Why? Why would they do it? And that's the bigger question. And you work backwards from there. Instead of looking at the end result, the price and the counterintuitive madness that happens when it doesn't move the way you think it would, ask yourself why some of the most powerful banks in the world would be short silver, naked short to this degree. And, you know, I've talked a lot about the fact that the 
Silver Institute doesn't, they say that there is no aerospace or military uh, components in, in, in using silver. Not right. Really? What? <laughs> and when you realize the, the wars that are being fought all over the place and the amount of munitions that, you know, you, you, you got, you got the military asking for another, I don't know how many billions in, in munitions for us right now, because we've depleted it so much. Where's the money come from? Military spending, by the way, is um, discretionary. It has to be borrowed because we don't have enough money to pay for it. So we borrow it to, to pay for our military. So and we borrow everything. We pay borrow money to give to other countries or borrow money to build munitions to give to other countries. I mean, it's just insanity. But if you want to, you know, the military industrial complex, if you believe they're as powerful as they are, who owns the military industrial complex? BlackRock, Vanguard? I don't know. And, and what is BlackRock and Vanguard? No, don't you? They own lots of the ETFs and I mean, they got their fingers everywhere. So if you don't want silver to go higher so you can continue to build these munitions and fund these never-ending wars, whether you're involved in them or not, you got to kill, kill the price of silver because otherwise you can't do it. Well, maybe India is in on this. Maybe they understand that, yeah, we know exactly what they're doing. So if you can't beat them, join it. Hold the price down with leverage and buy everything physical that's not nailed down. At some point, you have to have a an equilibrium between supply and a um, increasing demand and a falling supply, both above ground and below ground. So yeah, uh, silver is a big deal right now, and wouldn't lose sight of that. Um, sitting here uh, looking at some of these, uh, boy, I tell you, this one's a tough one. Me, I think silver has much more room to. Yeah, grow you don't do that gold. yet. Not yet. Yeah, I, I, me personally, I want it, but I'm not giving financial advice. Uh, well, I can that. say that I'm not going to, you know, everyone always has to say I'm not giving financial advice. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'll give myself the advice. And that is if it were me, I wouldn't do it yet. At 40 to one. Yeah. Now you can start doing it because at 40 to one, you're at a 200 year price average. But geologically for 5,000 years, it was 16 to one. And now it's seven to one. And if it weren't for the distortions by these banks, like I was just talking about holding down the price to and and maybe maybe there's a fine line between conspiracy and reality but holding down the price so that the military industrial complex has enough silver to build their you know their high tech aerospace and 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 military programs where you need copious amounts i mean like i told you i was i was spoken to at my conference in vancouver this this winter by a, a consultant for the Department of Defense who said, you're right, there is between 14 and 15 kilograms in the tip of a Tomahawk cruise missile. This guy, um, just, this is the guy right here. This is his program, the Tomahawk cruise missile. He just sent me this, this mug, you know, and, and, oh, cool. and this is the guy that said to me, you're right. And this was my baby. He said, I worked on the program. So, you know, why is why is that not in the Silver Institute's numbers? I'm calculating supply and demand. And if indeed it's there's a, a mint box of silver in the tip of one missile, I mean, really? Uh, so the point of it is, is that maybe that's why they've held the price down for so long. And and you know, when when the exchanges were were designed way back when to create all of this leverage, um, you know these countries like india and and china and and russia they they weren't industrialized wealthy enough sophisticated enough they they didn't have the ability to cha challenge the west the, the g7 and they do now and they have the sophistication the wealth um uh and and they they understand what's happening so Things are changing rapidly, and and the worst thing about it is the mainstream media that is just leading people to slaughter. Um, by oh, soft landing rates are going to go lower, and, and rates aren't going lower. I've been saying that forever. There were supposed to be four rate cuts. Where'd they go? And if they do lower rates, you'll see a resumption of wicked inflation that's already here. But they're saying it's not here because the CPI is a lie, and you know <laughs> this is all being done not to maintain you know the the last the last vestiges if you will of an empire that seems to be you know seems to not be running on all cylinders yeah the uh biden administration threw us another one yesterday they're considering tapping into the strategic political reserve excuse me petroleum reserve again uh leading into uh this fall because of inflation they want to artificially make it look lower so they can get a rate cut between now and the election because Inflation, energy carries a huge uh, piece of that. 
Uh, I mean, it just, it, it's the ultimate in, insanity. They know what causes it. This is not a secret. Well, uh, then what fact, happens if we lose important. the petrodollar status? You want to talk about inflation? You want to talk oh. about inflation and interest rates that spike to the moon? What happens if Saudi Arabia says, we're not, we're not with you anymore? You're, you're never ending sanctioning of people that we are aligned with, the fact that you're going green, the fact that you're massively indebted, the fact that your bond market is volatile, and the fact that your country has lost its bearings. We're not taking dollars anymore for oil. If you think inflation is bad, if you think interest rates are high, wait until that happens. That's been what I've been saying forever. And that's the point, is that 20 years ago, my mentor, Richard Russell, said the Fed is too far down the rabbit hole. They will either inflate or default. Inflate or die, he always said. Every newsletter, inflate or die. This is the smartest dude I have ever encountered in my life. And how about option three, find a villain. And that's what we're doing. By going around, by Janet Yellen saying, I'm going to sanction China, I'm going to sanction Russia, we're already sanctioned Iran, um, and we're going to sanction any of you who don't do what we tell you to do or, or do what we don't like. Forget about what we're doing, which is worse, but that doesn't matter because we're the world reserve currency. And we're broke, and we're insolvent, and we're wayward, but that doesn't matter. And, and so, I mean, look at it from their point of view. Put yourself in the shoes of these other countries. And, and it's like, you know, it's like an episode of the Black Mirror. I mean, it's, it's dystopian. And are, they can't be this stupid. Janet Yellen looks like a, a curmudgeon. And, and, and she's going around telling the world what they can and can't do from a broke and insolvent and wayward country. God bless America. I love it more. I mean, it's done everything for me, man. It has. It's given me opportunities, and that's why I'm so pissed off about it, because what they are doing is destroying what this country stood for and the wonderful opportunities that it presented. You tell me how a kid, you know, with $50 McDonald's for a couple people or, or you know, houses that are, are, are unobtainium for most people, the cost of living being, how does a kid coming out of college ever expect to make it in this environment? And we are being told everything's great. Um, I don't know. I, I just, it, 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 it aggravates me more and more and more to see this idiot Janet Yellen going around and saying this. And, and that's why I think it's too stupid to be stupid. It's planned. They can't no, it, absolutely. Dumb. Yeah. You, you can't be that dumb. You can't be that stupid. And, and, you know, I, I may have read this last week, but it, just for those who haven't, there's this one, you know, when we talk about, and I got to go in about five minutes. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I have 70 you know. podcasts today, and I, my people who book my podcast double, kind of double book me at 11 o'clock. So I apologize. I'd, I'd really love to stay here. But this, you know, the Chinese think in terms of decades. And, and, you know, listen to this. This is from the chairman of the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And he, he said this on May 15th, 2014. He said, the Shanghai Gold Exchange will change the current gold market with its consumed in the East but priced in the West arrangement. And when China has the right to speak in the international gold market, the true price of gold will be revealed. So understand, they know exactly what's going on, and that's why they're buying it at the level that they are and producing it at the level that they are. Andy, did you say in the past that people's gold and silver through Miles Franklin is stored in individual private? Yes. Now, that's different than in an IRA. The IRA is not our storage program. That's that's different. But in our Brink storage program, 1,000%, it is always um, segregated and insured in your name and audited. And I wouldn't do it any other way. I wouldn't put my name to a, to, to a um, storage program that wasn't completely and totally individually insured um, and segregated. Um, all right. I know you need to get out of here. Uh, totally respect that and understand. And thank you for squeezing us in, even with the double booking. Uh, always, always happy to do it, Mark. And, uh, you know, so tonight I have my last podcast at eight o'clock. What time is Whiskey and Wisdom? Let's see. What time is it? It's uh, at eight o'clock Eastern at eight o'clock Eastern. And how late is that going to go? It'll go till nine. If you join, it'll go a little late because we'd have fun. Yeah. So my last one is at eight. Send me the link. I'll try to join maybe towards the end. But uh, sounds great. Anyway, oh, yeah, it'll be uh, really good. We'll, be have every, we'll have everybody properly prepared.
Right on. That that's always good. I mean that that's good. I'll try. I know I say it every week, but I will try. Uh, and no matter what, I'll see you all next week. And uh, you stay well, Mark, and everyone else out there. Safe travels home from Brazil, buddy. Thank you, sir. See you guys. See you. All right, all uh, as Andy dips out um, and heads off to his uh, next one. All right, much to cover on the fly here. Let's see if I can make much sense to this one. Yeah, <laughs> chanted felon instead of yelling. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one. All right, some of the other news out there. We touched on some of the uh, some of the financial things I've not gotten to yet. Overseas, this one uh, showing up in a New Zealand publication. Overseas experience points to digital cash not being widely adopted so far. They're talking about central bank digital currencies. Specifically, some of the ones that came up in some of the Caribbean nations, the sand dollar, Bahamas, a number of countries uh, trying it. Adoption seems low. There's a reason adoption is low. Uh, and fortunately, these governments are having a difficult time understanding it. We don't trust them. Uh, we know there are social credit scores. We've seen them crack down. We've seen what they do. The adoption is going to be very difficult unless they put in extreme controls on themselves. So they can't just randomly, without oversight, freeze our access, uh, freeze our free speech, uh, financial, et cetera. Uh, there is an article on that one and what's going on on that front. Uh, I've got a neat article in there about the CFA. Frank, will the colonial currency finally be replaced? A couple of things I really want to touch on these. I've put in, if you guys want to read them, they'll be over at the originalmarkz.com. The link's uh, in just a bit. I got other things, though, I want us to discuss before we call it a wrap. Um, Gold Telegraph with a post yesterday. Federal Reserve working paper warns the central bank digital currency could increase financial instability. Duh. Just like the uh, piece from New Zealand saying, hey, people just don't want it. We recently learned that researchers at the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia said switching to gold standard could stabilize prices. I shared that with you when it first came out recently was amended again that article or that research more and more pointing that direction i did have or notice somebody uh in chat wanted to know if andy believes uh that in our he does believe that some form of reset and push back towards commodity does have uh, currency as well what it's going to look like that's the question that's probably where many differ they totally agree where we're headed it's the steps in between as to what it looks like uh, he's he's explained that one many times in the past on this podcast, guys, on this one. He's talked about it many, many times uh, in the past. Uh, we'll try to get him to broach it first thing next week. I just caught that question after he was wrapping up, uh, but he has mentioned his support. He doesn't know about all the currencies, uh, but many of the ones we are watching, he very much believes have great potential. <laughs> reading some of those. I did see somebody panicked about bonds. Guys, I cannot find a bond group that is accepting more bonds at this point because um, they believe we are so close to not want any curves. They do not want to risk their time going to the back of the line. I've been told over and over and repeatedly, if you have any type of historic bond that you were supposed to let them know when you sent your redemption appointment, what you have, because it could change where in your order of appointment. I don't have any more news for you than that. I don't have a magical connection with uh, bond folks. They're going to squeeze every one of you guys in, even if you only have a handful. Um, you're late to the game. You're going to have to play it uh, by their rules now. I'm still hearing it will be honored and good. You're just going to have to wait until you redeem currencies as well. Let me see if I can... Uh, One, this is one, Mike, where I, I feel like I am bashing my head with people. If we do not reset and tie ours to a gold standard, then it will devalue and it will adjust to other currencies that are strong in commodities. This is what will happen if we do not RV and reset and go to a standard and a gold standard. There are those two possibles. If we do not have a white hat plan in there to fix things, then yes, our currency is going to take it on the chin. Currencies of countries that are wealthy in assets will do very well. Uh, gold, silver will do very well. 
Um, that is the inevitability. That is what history has taught us. Every time there is a reset, that is what happens. It has happened a number of times in history. You can go back and study the history of those. So you're looking at two possible outcomes. And I, I don't know how to, I, I feel like I am constantly explaining that. I just, all right, hopefully you got what I was putting down there. Uh, Suzanne, I don't know how to find the Insiders Club. I know many of you guys do. Somebody share it. I don't know what to tell you. Never have known what to tell you. But I get asked that every time I'm going to be over there. Betty, why don't we ever hear anything about Canada? Because it's the same around the world. Do I need to? I mean, yeah, I don't understand when you guys get confused on that one. If you're in Canada, it's going to work the same way it works in the U.S. If you're in the U.K., it's going to work the same way it works uh, in the UK as it works in the US. If you're in Canada, it's going to work the same way as the UK as it works in Canada. This is a worldwide event. When it happens, you will find out which banks have the personnel, the equipment, the training to proof your currencies right there. And that's where you'll go. I, we, You don't need any specific news just to your country. You don't need any specific news for the US. You don't need any specific news for the Philippines. So that's why you don't hear anything about them specifically. You hear about the U.S. because I happen to be from the U.S. Now, I'm pretty certain, Charlie, it will be out on Rumble as well. But I think there is a delay between the Insiders Club and when it gets posted on Rumble. But I'm about 100% certain it ends up on Rumble as well. Not 100%, but pretty certain. Yeah, and I can't blame a lot of people. Ah, it's 10 bucks a month. Look, guys, when you look at the war uh, going on with what we can and can't say, uh, I, I wish I could do the same and have my own version of that so that I could board the servers to be able to have free speech because I hold back a whole heck of a lot and I have to. Or you wouldn't be able to hear me at all. All right, number of other things to uh, get to number of other things to get to. Biden impeachment efforts starting to lose steam. House Republicans say, I don't think we have the will to impeach Joe Biden. Representative Troy Nels tells Fox News Digital. Uh, guys, this to me is so concerning. This to me, and, and we're going to talk about this a little bit today, probably the point where you guys won't want to hear it uh, from me anymore. Actually, many of you guys will probably agree. Uh, Neil's saying, just don't think we have the political will to impeach him. We just don't. We have a two seat majority. You've got some guys in these tough districts that don't want to alienate maybe independents or moderates. They've laid out a good case for impeaching him, but I just don't think we have the will to do it. A number of GOP lawmakers saying exactly that. When you only have that two seat majority, you've already said that you don't have the will. That one's done. No matter what the guilt, no matter what the evidence, they don't have the they don't have the balls in an election year to do it. You won't be there. I, I want to make that extremely clear to these folks that don't have the will. Your party, the GOP, is abandoning its base. That base is going to continue to vote America first. Call it MAGA. Call it whatever you uh, need to call it. You're going to lose your base. They will abandon you. This is not a question. As we look at the, and one of the great examples I want to use at this as the GOP is thinking about this or uh, considering bailing on that one here. Let me rearrange a couple of these stories. All right, let me uh, get these in the order I want them. Uh, Congress is lying to you about FISA. It gets even more interesting. The FISA bill that they are looking to renew on Friday, um, not only does it renew the existing, it actually adds scope and breadth to it. Uh, NSA is just days from taking over the internet, warns Edward Snowden. The FISA 702 bill has been described by critics as dramatic and terrifying expansion of the United States government's surveillance powers. We're going to go back to this one with their unwillingness to impeach or go after Biden for the crimes, um, claiming just not enough political will. FISA as well, and the overreach. 
the infringement of my constitutional rights. I want to make it very clear. I will not vote. I will not support. I will not donate to. I will not say kind words. I will actively pursue their opponent's success for any of those Republicans that vote for 702. For any of those that choose not to go after the right thing and pers and prosecute on the impeachment when there are clear evidence of crimes, or at least to hear it, to pursue it, to go after, to find out if it's true, not true, etc. I won't support you. You have officially off my radar. I will abandon you and I will leave you hung out to dry. I will do more than that. I will vehemently go after you for your lack of political will for your inability to do the right thing. There's no time to be weak. This is, it's a war. It's not a shooting war. It's a, it's a political war. And I'm sorry, you're just not going to get my support. I hope many of you people agree in that one. It is a time of choosing. You get to choose right or you get to choose wrong. You don't get to choose anything else in this one. I know many things in the life are gray. Many things in life are gray. Some things are black and white, meaning good or evil. In that example, Biden refusing to testify defies a document. You are throwing me. You're throwing we the people. You're throwing the American people who you are supposed to support. Now, this is not happening just in America. This is happening in Brazil. This is happening in the UK. This is happening in France. This is happening in Germany. It's happening all over the world. This is the case here in the U.S. And it is the FISA, the overreaching, the authoritarian powers, and it is their unwillingness to fight the blob that is doing it. I got nothing for you. As far as I'm concerned, you're dead to me once you make that decision, whether it's Friday, whether it's before then, whether it's after then. Just want to be absolutely clear. Now, this should have already passed. But we took to, uh, when I say we, we the people, uh, many of the people in this community took to social media and put in their two cents on FISA. And that caused a number of GOP members to back up and take another look. Now, I highly suggest if you are represented in your district by Democrat, you do the same thing. It's your time to scream or never scream again. You will lose the right to complain if you do not scream. So get to it. Get to it. When you get those contribution uh, requests, directly reach out to them and say, I want to know. This is a litmus test. How will you vote on FISA approval, disapproval? How will you vote on Biden impeachment? Don't give them any quarter. Do not give them any out. It is a yes, no question. If you want my support, this is your litmus test. This is a very important policy over party. They need to know that that is real. All right. I wanted to get into that one. Uh, only a couple more. More than 50 jurors dismissed on the first day of Trump hush money trial. Now, this to me is interesting because I tell you, I wish the good judge would take the same test. So uh, the judge started off with the question, hey, can you be impartial to this? Do you uh, already have your strong opinions one way or the other? More than half the prospective jurors uh, were dismissed during the first day. 96 possible juries were asked by Judge Juan Merchant if they could be fair or impartial. And more than half raised their hand to indicate that they couldn't. According to press pool reporters who estimated that at least 50 were let go for that reason alone. If you, and this is the judge's words, if you have an honest, legitimate, good faith reason to believe you cannot serve on this case or cannot be fair and impartial, please let me know now. They stood up and said, can't do it. Whether it's because they hated Trump or because they believe, believed he was being unfairly prosecuted, persecuted, either way, they were good enough human beings to say, I cannot be impartial. The judge has not been that upfront or that honest. The judge is a Trump hater which means cannot be impartial. The judge, by that same litmus test that it gave the jurors, should step away and remove themselves. The district where it is being heard, 87% of the population voted for Biden against Trump. 
It's not even close to 50-50. That's not a jury of your peers. It is impossible. This case will absolutely end up appealed if uh, the prosecution is successful. And come on, let's be honest. You have, you got the judge on your side. You have 90, 87% chance that you have the jury on your side. This is not fair. This is kangaroo. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and name all of the uh, prosecution and the judge joeys because they are obviously kangaroos in a kangaroo court. Uh, if you want any appearance of impartiality or honesty in this one, you move the district and you do it immediately. Uh, the judge, with his connection between his daughter and his wife and their donations to the Biden campaign into groups that are aligned against Trump, should automatically remove themselves. It is a kangaroo court. This is how it appears to me. This is how it appears to an overwhelming majority of people inside the United States. It is a kangaroo court and a kangaroo prosecution. Don't give them any quarter. Don't let them get away with it. Uh, now, here's another as we deal with weaponized judicial system. Court overturns West Virginia transgender sports ban. Uh, yeah, they find the right judge. It's, this is how it works now. We just keep moving things from courtroom to courtroom until we find a judge that is woke. Of course, it happens on both sides. But federal appeals courts block West Virginia law that bans students from participating in single-sex sports teams that don't match their biological uh, sex, meaning, hey, no. And this is because a 13-year-old eighth-grade male wants to compete because he identifies as a female. Uh, they passed the law, ACLU, fighting this one. Guys, I, I, I totally understand. I do. I acknowledge that that 13-year-old has a right to identify as a female. Absolutely. Has the right to identify. Here's the thing. I also absolutely have the right to call BS. Just because they want to pretend doesn't mean I have to pretend with them. And they are going to be on the field competing with your daughters, your granddaughters, your nieces. It is not safe. It is not fair. It is simple. Science. Science still matters. It is still important. Don't tell me I'm ignorant and uneducated because I adhere to science. This is clearly gaslighting from the left. I don't have any room for their stupid anymore. Brink of unrest. Migrants flood New York City City Hall in protest of losing luxury hotel rooms. Yeah, New York's trying to save money. The backlash, many upset um citizens they are tired of their money keeping people in much better living conditions than themselves and then they have to pay for it uh, so they citywide they started moving migrants to shelters instead of luxury hotels with great meals they took to the streets um, it got violent and yeah I, you, you can't make up the level of craziness going on in the country right now you can't even uh, follow the bouncing ball. I'm flabbergasted that after years of women seeking quality with men, the feminist movement was so lax when it comes to men taking over their sports, their pageantry, their pregnancy. To me, it's absolutely insanity. Trying to keep up with you guys. Uh, Real truth lies. This is one of those that I've answered a lot. Um, said, I'm curious what your thoughts are of what we might see with the currencies will hold on wise cards when appointments go for 4B. Is that when you would expect to see rates immediately? The moment they announce this thing, you will automatically change. You won't have to do a thing. It's just going to be automatic at whatever that international rate is. Zero requirement to do anything. It just changes and goes immediately. It will go before you can get to a bank and do any exchanges. And I'm with you. Bobby uh, Lay saying identifying as anything other than who you are is a symptom of psychosis. Pretty simple in my book. They used to uh, suggest you get mental help when you did that, when you thought you were, I don't know, Superman. Um, when you had imaginary friends that didn't exist, when you did all, they would send you off to get counseling and help. Now, if you know, you're like, hey, I just like 
dressing as a thing. I like pretending I'm a female. I like the feel of, you know, the little silky things or whatever it is. Knock yourself out. It's the mental thing saying, hey, I'm not really this when you're that. That's. Yeah, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's uh, you can put all of your will into thinking that a piece of granite is a piece of gold, but it's not going to do you any daggone good when you try to go sell it as a piece of gold. Put all the spray paint on it that you want. Take your Yugo and put uh, Bentley badges on it. Sand them right off. Put a Bentley badge on it. That Yugo is still a Yugo. It just has Bentley badges. Your Chevy Cruze is not suddenly going to become a Lamborghini just because you put different wheels on it, different emblem on it. That is just not how it works. But certainly knock yourself out, throw the badge on it, pretend all you want. Uh, I have every intention, sir, for doing an X space. I did not want to derail things before we cross the 100K mark, but that is on the agenda. <clears throat> yeah, the left always agrees on science and to use chromosomes. Actually, Roy, they, they lost it on the science argument. Uh, we now have, what, three quarters of people don't trust doctors. Fortunately, we still have great trust in nurses. Uh, majority of people, what is it, almost uh, three quarters, no longer trust mainstream media. People are waking up. People are waking up. Colleen, there you go. Colleen, lipstick on a pig doesn't make it a rose. A rose by any other name still smells as sweet. Ooh, it just occurred to me. Just occurred to me. <laughs> Some of these. We have a few kind of uh, trolls that consider themselves sly. Uh, that is for certain. Let's see, my can and string. Uh, it, uh, I'm trying to follow some of these. I saw a good one. I'm trying to get to it. Beth W., thank you. Uh, it's not even that I'm salty. I'm just common sense. It is just duh. Let's see, Gary Goldleski, no currency questions. Just wanted to ask if you have checked. Oh, God, yeah, I've checked on her nonstop. Nonstop. Karen, don't worry. You will have plenty of opportunity, plenty of chances for your exchange. I have been told repeatedly that they will make provisions to either uh, get you to them or for them to come to you for those that are in a bad way physically. That is just something you don't need to worry about. There will be plenty of options. Oh, wow. Four grand Rocky for a house in rent for 2,300 square. It's gotten nuts. It has gotten absolutely nuts when you look at these markets and they're busy telling us it's only 3% inflation. Was it 30 some percent is the housing inflation, but your inflation is only three and a half percent. Uh, your groceries have gone up anywhere from what 17 to 80 some percent. It's only three and a half percent inflation. Uh, I, the list can go on and on and on. And they expect you to believe it. This is probably the craziest thing. And then there are some that do believe it. There are some amongst our society that believe those numbers. There's some in powerful positions that believe it. If you guys haven't had the opportunity to watch uh, The Five do a kind of a dive or a look with the latest Katie Kirk comments, uh, that anybody that's America First, MAGA, anybody that votes for Donald Trump is, uh, what, what is the exact term she used <clears throat> as we just make them up? Oh, it's anti-intellectualism. It's anti-intellectualism. Because uh, clearly... We are all stupid for thinking science matters and reality matters. Uh,
the side telling me that chromosomes don't matter and that men can have babies is supposed to be the intellectually superior science-based group. I do not know in what reality you live, but you are clearly delusional and in need of some mental help. I support. I support your right to believe what you believe. I do. I don't have to respect it, though. I respect your right to think it. I don't respect that belief. All right. Links will be up there. Yeah, Sinstone. That's another one. That was kind of a funny one. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's actually 80-something, I believe, is the average IQ of a Democrat. Uh, Republicans score a little better. Uh, perhaps the highest are independent voters. And surprisingly, communists score higher than socialists in intelligence. Uh, Harvard did a study. So when they tell you you're the dumb one, but Snopes then, the fact checkers come in and say, yeah, but it's not necessarily true. Yes, overall, it tends to be true. But individually, it doesn't mean that it's a reflection of your IQ just as a group. So much interesting research out there that flies in the face of everything they say. Let's see, Polly Collie, in my neighborhood, the prices range from 699,000 to 835,000 for four to five bedroom homes. Wow. Yeah, Tim Food, Katie's had too much Kool Aid. She's had all the Kool Aid. She came back for seconds, thirds, and fourths. She got a Kool Aid IV, she got it on a drip. Dog hostage. Yeah, rumors are it started in Brazil. You can't find any evidence to support it. I've heard it as well, dog hostage, but I cannot find any evidence to support that it has started here. Uh, let's see. Today's my only hubby's birthday. Wait, you only have one husband? <laughs> Just kidding. You should only have one husband. Happy birthday to your husband. Hopefully we will see some lovely progress and I'll get something very positive. Tell us your podcast while you're in Brazil. Um, normal today, tomorrow, Thursday night, will probably be recorded. Friday night will probably be recorded if we do one. Um, event staff, et cetera. Charlie arrives uh, early tomorrow. Uh, my demands on my schedule will get pretty, pretty stout uh, starting late tomorrow afternoon. Uh, very normal morning tomorrow. Friday morning is going to be normal as well, uh, but those will be, I will have some time constraints on Thursday and Friday night, and of course Saturday, but that doesn't matter after we do the morning podcast because we don't normally do one. Yeah, Tammy, wish I had three husbands in today's economy, right? You need more of them making money. All right, guys. Let's, uh, let's, uh, what group am I addressing here? I, I don't know how to describe that. Um, we should have internet access. I will do my best to stream some of it live so that you guys can see some of it and make your own, uh, your own take on who we're talking to here. <laughs> reading this is so much fun all right i'm gonna call that a wrap and i will see you guys again at seven and then again at eight for those that are making it to the insiders club i'll see you at uh i assume it is one eastern to my time uh booger's birthday again right cue ball i've been told over and over that the internet is not going down <clears throat> and i will sing happy birthday I've been told that if it does, it will only be in small areas for brief amounts of time. Guys, people would die all over the world if the internet gets shut down. It is not going to work that way. Just not going to work that way. If it does, we have much bigger things to worry about. All right, let's do this one. Your birthday, folks. We had Lily Bear, Walter. Uh, we had a couple others. In the middle of where no. Y'all are killing me. Cue ball, you're welcome. So they tell me it's your birthday. Well, happy birthday, darling. May you live, may you love. Make all your dreams come true. 
Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, to all those celebrating. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here and try to get as much done as I can before I have to be in front of the computer again. See you guys this evening.